Tina Fano. <coughs> um, this is the first time I've done this, so please bear with me. <laughs> um, I'm standing in for my lovely husband. Um, <laughs> both Ken, both, yes. yes. Um, so step one is learn how to turn on the microphone. So here we go. <laughs> I learned something already. So welcome to the house of God this morning. Um, it's really great to see all your lovely faces and um, big ups to those people that set their alarm and, and got here. Um, as uh, Kelly McLeod said one time when he does the 8.30 service, uh, he may or may not have a shower before he arrives. <laughs> So, big ups to uh, those people that are here and had a shower. <laughs> cool. So, um, it's really great to be here. And um, I was just thinking about the scripture this morning. I was glad when they said to me, let's go up to the house of the Lord. And I was thinking, why am I glad? Why, why am I glad um, to go up to the house of the Lord? And I was like, well, it's because Jesus is here. And Jesus just makes everything better. Um, I was also thinking of the scripture about how God works all things together for our good. And um, sometimes we can see those good things. Um, they're overt. They're in our face. We can experience those blessings. Sometimes we can't see the good that God is doing. Sometimes he's working in the background. Sometimes he's bringing those things that look terrible and actually making something good out of that that we find out later. But he's always working for good. Um, so here we are in the house of God with Jesus who makes everything better. Uh, with all these wonderful people who throughout the week have been doing what would Jesus do. And one of the things that I love about church is actually hearing and experiencing how other people do what would Jesus do? Um, we all do it slightly different. We all are wired differently. Some of our personalities are different to others. Some of our interests, some of our life stages, all sorts of things are different. Um, and that expression of Jesus comes out slightly differently. But when we all gather together, we all get a much bigger picture of what he's like. And I just love that. So it's great to be here with Jesus, with you, his body, and um, I'm really excited about this morning. Uh, we've got Kahu on worship this morning, looking forward to that. We've got the lovely Robin um, sharing the word today, so I'm looking forward to that as well. So um, let's pray, um, let's commit our time to God. Father God, we just thank you, we thank you that we can come together, we thank you that we are part of your body. Thank you that where the spirit is, there is freedom. There is life. Thank you for what you've done in our lives. Thank you for what you are going to do as well. Thank you that you are always good, whether we can see it right now or whether you're working behind the scenes. So Lord, we just commit this time to you, um, our time of connecting with you, our time of connecting with each other, and uh, we invite your Holy Spirit to be here with us. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Great. So, now I'd like to hand over to the production team for the notices. Water baptisms are coming up on the 8th of October. If you'd like to get water baptised, put your name down at the Jane desk at the bank of the channels. Hey Fano, our six week Foundation in Faith course is coming up on the 10th of October at 7pm. If you're new to the house or a new Christian, we encourage you to join this course. Please sign up at the registration form at the Jam desk. The venue will be advised later. Thank you. This is a call to prayer, the whole house of breakthrough. Our corporate prayer night 
will be on Tuesday, 26th of September from 7pm to 8pm. Please put this date into your diaries. And that fire's hot. Men, we've got a special thing coming up for you. We've got a men's breakfast on Sunday the 24th at 6.30am down in the cafe. We'll be going through to 8am. All you need to do to register is go to the Just Ask Me desk, put your name down and pay $5 for registration and your breakfast will be awesome. Looking forward to seeing you there. Mm. Speaking of Sunday the 24th, we've got a Tehahi combined service at a live church at Leith Street at 5.30 p.m. Sunday the 24th. What you need to do for the service is bring along a salad or a dessert for afterwards. The rest of the food will be provided for and a message and great fellowship. It'd be great if you can make it. Before we go to worship, I want you to find a friend or someone you can share 10 things you're grateful for this week. Go! Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Oh. 
prince of peace, that is what I long to do. I give you praise, for you are my the world took on our sin 
suffered in our place. The perfect sacrifice. The perfect sacrifice. A lamb without blemish. A lamb without fault. The perfect sacrifice for our sin. We were doing what was right in our eyes. We pursued what was right in our eyes. And God knew. grateful that you came to earth. I'm so grateful that you walked among us and showed us how to live. I'm so glad that you paid the price that I could never pay. I'm so glad that you died in my place. I'm so glad for all the things that you purchased with your life, with your death, and with your resurrection. I'm so grateful that you give us your spirit to walk with us every day. Lord, on the night that you were <coughs> on the night that you were betrayed, you sat with your disciples. You prayed with them. You broke bread with them. You ministered to them. You prepared them for what was going to come. And Lord, I thank you that you invited us to remember that time, to remember what you did, to remember what you continue to do in our lives. You invite us to remember the sacrifice that you made. You invite us to remember the freedom that you brought. You invite us to remember that because of you, we can be connected to the Father. You invited us to remember that even though physically you were gone for a while, we would never be left or forsaken. Thank you that you are with us all the time. And as we gather at the communion table today, thank you that you invite us to connect again. Connect again with the sacrifice that you made. Connect again with the connection that we have with you. To remember. We are so grateful.
please um, help yourself to the communion table and just enjoy soaking in this presence. Thank you so much, Kahu. Um, so yeah, um, now I have the pleasure of introducing Robin Kappa. Um, she's got a wonderful message for us this morning, I'm sure. Can't wait to hear it. And um, yeah, I hope you'll be blessed. Thanks. Kia ora koutou katoa. No mai hara mai ki te whare o te atoa. As Jill said, my name is Robin, if you haven't seen me before, and I'm privileged to um, give our word this morning. I just want to thank Jules. She did a great job, didn't she, for her first time? Oh, I must admit, I was getting a bit like, oh, there's nobody else up here on the front seat. <laughs> Who's going to come? But thank you, Jules. And thanks, Kahu, for that anointed, um, anointed singing. It was beautiful. Um, I'll just pray. Father God, I just thank you for this morning. I thank you for this word, Lord Jesus. I just pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit will be um, all over it, Lord, and you will come in power, in your power and your might, Father God, to heal, Lord Jesus, to refresh, Father God, and to encourage. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, and um, this is all for your glory, Father, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, my korero this morning, and thank you for our songs about the heart, because the, my korero this morning is about heart matters, and... Um, it came about recently because I heard these words, to walk tender-hearted, and I thought, wow, that sounds awesome. How do you do that, and am I doing it? I better check it all out. So um, I thought I'd just go about looking at different heart matters in the word, and also what others have said about them. When Jesus came to earth, he taught that while actions are important, God is more concerned about our hearts. He desires that we love him, trust him, obey him, and imitate his character. And if our hearts are in the right place, right actions will follow. 
1 Samuel 16, verse 7, Pastor Jess mentioned this in her word last week as well, the Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Strong's Bible Concordance says that the brain is not mentioned once in the Bible, but the heart is mentioned 826 times. Wow. <laughs> in the King James Bible, there are 762 passages about the heart. Well, don't worry, I'm not going to quote them all, but it just shows that, you know, how God is really interested in our heart matter, matters. Hearts matter to God. In biblical Hebrew, the heart is where we make choices, motivated by our desires. And it gives the example that David had it in his heart to build a temple for the Lord. Honour is attached to our heart condition. And in his book, The Honour Key, which Chris also uh, mentioned in his call earlier the other day, so we're reading the same book, um, Russell Evans states that honour includes the heart condition and the outward expression of respect and reverence for something that we esteem to the highest degree, God, sovereign creator. The heart is the generator of physical life and also the centre of our intellectual and emotional life. It pumps blood around our body, sends oxygen and nutrients to all the parts it needs and carries away unwanted carbon dioxide and waste. And we can see the parallel in that to the precious blood of Jesus. We give our lives to him, he covers us with his blood and he cleanses and covers every sin and the, and the accompanying guilt that comes with it, reconciling us back to God. Proverbs 4, 23. Ki a pau o mahara, ki te tiaki i tō ngākau nō reira hoki ngā putanga o te ora. Above all else, guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Well, what does it mean to guard your heart above all else? One commentary I read puts it this way. Everything God wants to accomplish in our life comes down to our decisions and choices. The difference between walking in God's plan for our life and not walking in it are the choices that we make. And how do we guard our hearts? Christian counsellor and life coach Sunshine Gray, and yes, I checked this out, Pastor Lance, I think he must have mentioned in one of his words before that we should check out what we are reading. Um, so Christian counsellor and life coach Sunshine Gray gives these six points that I found helpful. One, read our Bible regularly. And as our apostle Norm said at the beginning of the year, Read the red, as they are the words of Jesus, who is the one who brings hope and changes our heart. Jesus said, I am gentle and humble in heart. Number two, pray regularly. Pray regularly and don't be afraid to make requests. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Number three, practice gratitude. And we did that this morning. Thank you, uh, Kahu, our 10 things we're grateful for. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Number four, renew your mind. Renew your mind by taking thoughts captive. Only allow that that comes in to be that which builds up in order that what comes out does not defile us. Number five, monitor what's in your heart and eliminate that which is not of God. Mark 7, 20 to 22, um, and this also relates to point four. Mark 7, 20 to 22. What comes out of a person's heart is what defiles them, for it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. Phew, that's quite a lot. <laughs> number six, thank you for number six, repent. Re <laughs> repent and turn back to Jesus who cleanses our hearts by washing away our sin and giving us a heart that is full of his love and a renewed desire to please him. Some of the changes that God has dealt with in my own heart and um, that relate to the points above. Number one, oh, there's a list again. Recognize when I'm being judgmental. Matthew 7, verse 1, don't judge people and you won't be judged yourself. 
next. Seeing others as God sees them, redeemed and whole. God sees us through eyes of unconditional love. It's easy to see other people's weaknesses, mistakes, style and appearance, but it's something else entirely to honour the unseen of who they are in Christ and the gifts that he has given them. Number three, reconciliation in my marriage. And uh, Pastor Jess will agree that I had a total heart transplant there. Um, Ephesians 4.12, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as, in, as Christ has forgiven you. Another one is choosing to forgive, especially when it's not easy. And that's where God's grace comes in. Number five, allowing myself to be vulnerable again after hurts. Now, that's not easy either when someone's hurt you. But Hebrews 4, 12, um, Hebrews 12 verse 4 sorry, says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and be holy. Without holy, holiness, no one will see the Lord. Working to the best of my ability when in paid employment, volunteering, or just helping someone out. Colossians 3, verse 23 in the Passion Translation says, Put your heart and soul into every activity you do, as though you are doing it for the Lord himself. And in saying that, I'm still a work in progress. But thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Here are some scriptures about um, purified hearts that you might like to check out if you're watching. Or, um, oh, kia ora if you're watching. <laughs> if you're watching or taking notes, or maybe you've just got a really good memory. Um, Matthew 5, verse 8. Acts 15, verse 9. 2 Timothy 2, 23. And Hebrews 10, 22. So those are just a few scriptures about purified hearts. And what about a broken heart? Most of us will have had or will have the pain of a broken heart at some stage in our life. Maybe a relationship breakup, a job loss, painful words spoken over us, a death or some other emotional trauma. It's difficult to live a joyful life with a broken heart and God wants us to be joyful. Even if we manage to hide our heartaches from others, God can still see. He loves us, and he wants us to be healed and whole. One of the reasons um, God sent his son Jesus for is to heal the brokenhearted. Psalm 38 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Some, um, there's a few brokenhearted people in the Bible, but some of the ones we can read about are Hosea. He went through heartache because of his wife Goma. <laughs> Naomi, whose heart was broken as a result of the deaths of her husband and two sons. Her heartbreak turned into bitterness, and she even had people call her Mara, which means bitter. And then Job had the heartache of losing his ten children, his health, his wealth, crops and livestock, and he had a good changed relationship with his wife and his friends. But the wonderful thing about these heartbroken people is that God, in his enduring love, restored and redeemed them, just like he can us. Hosea's love for his wife became an example of God's love for Israel and us. Naomi was restored by God with a guardian redeemer, Boaz, who married her widowed daughter-in-law, Ruth, and God renewed Naomi's life and sustained her in her old age, no longer, no longer Mara. God restored Job with 10 more children and twice as much fortune as before. Psalm 147 verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Isaiah 68 verses 1 and 3. 1, 2, 3, sorry. It's a prophetic word about Jesus. And Jesus himself, he quotes these words later on in Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19. Part of which say, he has sent me to bind up brokenhearted. I don't know about you, but these scriptures really give me hope and they've sustained me in times of my broken heart. Another heart matter is a hard heart. Hard hearts come about because of hurts, abuse, rejection, betrayal, etc. And it's a form of protection that we have, that we use. But a hard heart can lead to mistrust, doubt and isolation. A hard heart is a hurting heart, 
And there's that saying, hurting people hurt people. I know this because I've been there, and I'll tell you a testimony about it. Very few of my husband's whanau have lived past a certain age, and it's not an old, it's not an old age either. As time wore on in our marriage, and he was still a fair way away from that age, I hardened my heart towards him. I was unkind, separate, separated myself physically and emotionally towards him, and generally wasn't very nice, poor guy. So now you can see why I needed a total heart transplant. Poor guy. Anyway, I was totally ignorant as to why I was doing it, but it was a way of protecting myself from what or, may, or what may not happen in the future. Thankfully, God himself showed me what I was doing, and with prayer, repentance, guidance, and good counsel, those layers were able to be peeled away and our relationship restored. Amen. Psalm 51 verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. That's really cool. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. God also promised me that just like his word says, our latter days will be better than our former. And although my husband didn't make it past that age, we sure had better, our latter years were sure better. And just as Jules said earlier, God is a good, good God all the time. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 says, I will give you a heart. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And that's exactly what happened to me. Thank you, Lord. So, um, and here's another thought. Another thought. Did you know that your face, that the, the Bible actually says, that your face reflects your heart? Proverbs 15, <laughs> Proverbs 15 verse 13a in the NIV says, A happy heart makes the face cheerful. The same verse in the Passion Translation reads, a cheerful heart puts a smile on your face, a smile on your dial. Another verse in Proverbs says, a cheerful heart is good medicine. So we see that that helps with our health as well. He ora nako, he picking a way order. Positive feelings in your heart bring positive health. My favorite promise that the Lord gave me when I first became a Christian and it's also in our declaration. Nehemiah 8, 10b. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Robin, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Robin, the joy of the Lord is your strength. I like it when you emphasize every, each different word because it kind of like makes it more, um, I don't know, it's awesome. It makes it more meaningful. Um, so yeah, and over the years, I recognize, and if I don't, the Holy Spirit shows me signs that show that I'm losing my joy, and I know it's time to look at and reassess my heart matters. This verse has truly kept me going in many experiences during my life. Coming to an end, what about those words, original words that started me on this heart journey, to walk tender-hearted? A dictionary meaning for tender heart is very gentle, kind, showing love or pity. BibleTools.org says, a tender-hearted person is sensitive to the needs of others and compassionate and merciful, loving justice, hating injustice and sin while showing love towards the sinner. Another one says, a tender heart is aware of the needs of others, cares less about self and more about the joy that a sacrifice might deliver to a friend. Do all these scriptures remind you of anyone? The person that we've been singing about this morning, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the perfect example of how to walk tender-hearted. And Paul tells us in Ephesians 5 to follow Christ's example. Whether Jesus saw crowds or just the one, he had compassion on them, forgave their sins, and healed their diseases. Jesus was tempted in every way that we are, and yet he did not sin. And even on the cross, forgiveness was on Jesus' mind. Oh, to be more like Jesus and less like me. So thank you. If you're watching this and the Holy Spirit has prompted you, has prompted your heart in any way, 
I encourage you to give it to Jesus and lay it at the foot of his feet. May God bless the rest of your day. Amen and thank you. Thank you.